All right, let's play around with some more examples of data manipulation. Now, the concepts in this section are pretty simple, so this will be a quick one. I'm going to go back to our movie ratings data set, and if you are taking this course out of sequence and you need to download that data set, uh, head over to grouplens.org slash dataset slash movie lens, and you can find it on this page here under older data sets. It's the movie lens 100K data set that we're working with. After you extract the resulting ml-100k.zip file, you'll find a u.item file, and we've renamed that to movies.csv. So that kind of sets the stage here. So let's open up a new blank workbook in Excel, and we'll work from here. So let's import that movies.csv file into Excel using Power Query. To get to Power Query, we're going to go to Data, and say Get Data, and there's a handy shortcut here from Text CSV. Let's select that. And let's navigate to wherever you decompressed the movie lens data set. For me, I threw that in my F drive. And there is my movies.csv file. Again, that is a renamed u.item file from the original data set. So it appears Power Query uh, recognized the data format. That's good. And it did split it up into the correct columns, but we do need to give those columns names. We may as well do that as part of the ETL process. So I'll click on Transform Data. And the first column is the movie ID. The second column is the title with the release date. Third column is the release date. Fourth column is, according to the documentation, the video release date, but that is actually unpopulated. We then have the IMDb link. And then we have a bunch of columns that represent what genres that movie belongs to. And since I don't want to waste your time watching me enter all those genre names, we're just going to delete those columns later on. In fact, let's just delete them now as part of the transform process. So I can go to the right here select that entire range of columns, and click on Remove Columns. All right, looks good. All right, so that's a good uh, first pass at importing this data. Let's go ahead and hit Close and Load. All right, so we've got a decent set of data here to work with. Now, uh, I'm going to get rid of that video release date column as well because there's nothing in it. And, you know, really the concept of video release is... Uh, it's time has passed. We talk about streaming release these days. So let's go ahead and select that entire column, right click, and delete that as well. Okay, so let's get into some more examples of transforming data here with our movie lens data. So let's start by adding a title field, kind of like we did before, but we're going to do it in a little different way. Again, we want to extract those years out of the movie titles. So if I'm going to be looking up a movie title or displaying that title to somebody else, I probably don't necessarily want to display that year as part of the title itself. I think it would be better if I could split that out into two different fields. So let's at least extract the actual movie title. So I'm going to create a new column here, and let's call it um, movie name or something. And I'm going to use an expression here to just extract the beginning of that. So the way I'm going to do that is using the knowledge that the last six characters in the title will always represent the year enclosed by parentheses. So I can assume that every year consists of four digits and the open and close parentheses consist of two more. So if I just strip off the last six characters of every movie name, I should be left with the actual movie name without the year attached to it. So here's one way of doing that. I can say equals left, open parenthesis, select the original title, and that will come in as a at sign title comma, len, open parenthesis, again, clicking on the movie title field, close parenthesis, minus six, close parenthesis. So what's going on here? So I'm going to compute the overall length of that movie title, subtract six from it to get rid of that year at the end, and take the leftmost number of those characters to be just left with the movie title itself. Let's hit enter and see if it works. Sure enough, it did. And, you know, if you really want to be pedantic, uh, there's a, an extra space between the title and the name. So we probably could have gone with seven instead of six there, but we at least have something displayable that makes sense. So instead of Toy Story 1995, we now just have Toy Story. 
So that was an example of text processing and parsing strings. That's something we talked about in this section. Let's also add the release month. And one way of doing that would be by extracting that from the release date. So these release dates have a year, month, and day. I can just extract the month from that and display it as a month name, like January or February, whatever it might be. So this is going to be an example of date processing, which we also discussed briefly in this section. Again, very simple concept. Let's uh, expand this column just so it looks a little bit nicer and move over a little bit. So let's add another column here and we're going to call this one release month. And for this, we're going to say equals text, open parenthesis. We're going to click on the release date from that column, which comes in as at release date and then comma quote MMM end quote and parenthesis. So what's going on here? The text function is basically a way of processing dates that I can reformat that date into whatever format I want. So it's going to say, take the release date in its full form that contains the month, day, and year, and just reformat that using the MMM key. That means that I want to just show the month in a three character format. So for example, January would be J-A-N, February would be F-E-B, March would be M-A-R, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and hit enter and see if it works. Cool, it did. So we have successfully extracted the release month from the release date. So that might be interesting, right? If I'm doing some sort of analysis that looks at seasonality and summer blockbusters and behavior surrounding what time of year a movie came out, that might be an interesting thing to have handy there, the release month. What else can we do? Well, let's actually define what a summer blockbuster is. So let's go a little bit further and actually add a field that defines whether or not this was considered to be a summer movie or not. So let's say we have another column here. Let's call it is summer film. I'll leave off the term blockbuster because not every film released in the summer actually does well. <laughs> so let's do a more complicated query here. We're going to say if the release month was between say June and August, we'll consider that a summer release. And if not, we'll say it's not. So all we want to have in this column are yeses or nos. Is it a summer release or not? And we can do that with an if function. So this is going to be an example of a logical function and conditional data. Okay, we talked about that in this section as well. Equals if. And. Month. And we will select that release date field again. Close parenthesis. Greater than five, meaning more than May, June or later, comma. Again, month, open parenthesis, select the release date field, close parenthesis, less than nine, meaning less than September, close parenthesis. So what do we have so far? We're taking a look at the month twice here and we're putting it inside an and clause. So we're saying if the month is greater than five and the month is less than nine, we're gonna do something. What is that something? So comma, quote, why, quote, comma, quote, end quote, close parenthesis. So you got to kind of read this from the outside in. So we're starting off seeing whether or not the month is greater than five or less than nine. And we're putting that within an and clause. So that's going to only return true if the month is greater than five and less than nine, meaning June, July, or August. If that is true, if that is the case, that's what that if clause is doing, then we will put a Y in this field Otherwise, we will say N. So let's see if it works. Let's hit enter. Looks like it did something. So this had release dates of January, and those all came in as N. This had a release date in August, the usual suspects that came in as a Y. Bunch of Januarys and Februarys and Marches. Um, not a whole lot, actually, in the summer, interestingly enough. So I kind of suspect there's a data quality issue here because there's an awful lot of January releases in here. I think for films where they just don't have data about the exact release date and they only had the year, they just put in January 1st. So that might be another exercise in data cleaning there or something else we might want to check for. So maybe as an exercise for the reader, if you will, uh, you might want to further check if the date and month is one and one, in which case you might want to just put uh, undetermined or something. Like, I don't know when that actually came out. But assuming that that data was legitimate, it does seem to be doing the right thing. 
Uh, here's another summer release, uh, Mall of Flanders. Never even heard of that one. Uh, <laughs> we won't talk about that. Uh, Lone Star, The Cable Guy. Hey, this one I, I heard about. So The Godfather did not come out of the summer. Oh, well, we don't know because that just says 1-1. So I think they just don't have data for that. Wow. Yeah. Data can be complicated, right? But the concept there of a logical function and conditional data is what we're illustrating here. And the uh, data cleanliness issues are a separate concern. So let's also do an example of aggregation. Let's actually count up the total number of movies that we have. That should be pretty easy to do. Let's just go off to the side here and say equals count. And let's just select that entire first column. Close parenthesis, hit enter. And that's telling us that the grand total of the number of movies that we have in this movies.csv file is 1,682. So very simple example of aggregation, an aggregate function, count. We also talked really briefly about some built-in system functions, and we can at least address that in spirit here by using the now function. We could just say uh, update time and then have equals now. There you have it. Let's spread that out a little bit. So as we talked about, it's often good practice to put the time that the data was last updated or refreshed as part of any report you might create. And as long as we're making things pretty, uh, I would never just have that number there with no label, right? So let's, let's do that again. Let's actually put in total movies just to label that number. And then again, say equals count AA. And that's a little bit more human friendly, you know, not the prettiest report. We'll talk about making your reports pretty later in the course, but, um, uh, you definitely always want to label the data. So no one has to guess what that number means. All right. So there you have it. Some very simple examples. We imported our movies database from the movie lens data set into Excel using power query. We deleted the columns so that we don't really care about. We had an example of text processing and parsing strings by parsing the title field to extract the actual movie name. We also use a logical function and conditional data to extract whether or not a movie was released in the summer or not, at least the best we could given the data that we have. And we also used an aggregation function count to count up the total number of movies. And we use the now function to print out the current date for the refresh time, sort of a example of a system function, at least in spirit. There you have it. Let's move on.